Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Have you clicked on the notification bell? If you haven't, please do so now. Many, many years ago, we were young Christians. Three of us. We are all still in the gospel now. Three of us. Three of us. We decided to do evangelism. So we went there. As we wanted to enter, we met an old man. And we said, Where are you going? We said, We are ministers of God. We want to go and preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the village. The man laughed. He said, Do you know who you are talking to? He said, Daddy, we don't know. He said, I'm the chief priest of this village. You cannot enter. You can't bring another God, another idol here than the one our fathers gave to us to worship. Yeah, we, we said those gods you mentioned are powerless powers. He got angry. He said, look. Go away. He said, no. We're citizens of this country. Nigeria give us right to enter into anywhere. Nigeria I said, <laughs> your, your mothers. He you said, Your mothers. wants to become childless now. He said, Go away. He said, No, we're not going. Said, you want to die? He said, Daddy. Ani Baba. We died before we got here. He said, you, you died? And you are talking. Say so yes, we died before. We got it. So it's okay, since you are stubborn. So do you see those three shrines there? Three shrines. There. If you can enter inside that shrine, come out alive. I will accept this Jesus you're talking about. No one can enter into those shrines who is not the chief priest, the person who died. Since there were three shrines, we didn't know the one he was referring to. We said, but he pointed. Before he could even gather himself, all the three of us rushed inside the first room. And we came out. We rushed inside the second one. And we came out. We rushed inside the third one. And we came out. And we faced him. Say, Baba, anymore? Baba, so could be. It was. The cutlass he was holding dropped. He looked at us and spoke to us in Yoruba. Are you spirits? Are you spirits? Are you human beings? We say we are human beings. But we have accepted the Lord Jesus into our lives. Now I say, ah. Eh? Yeah. Uh, come and pray for my wife. We didn't even know the wife was sick. Ah, the wife had problems. That was how we were able to penetrate. But his threat, his threat, the way he was threatening us, is enough to scare anyone. So this is why I decree upon your life. Right there where you are. Receive the power to live a fearless life. Receive the power to live a fearless life. In the name of Jesus. Any king of terror ruling anyone's life here. I sack that king. In the name of Jesus. Every fear militating against your life is banished now. In the name of Jesus. The voice that you obey
determines your destiny. The voice that you obey determines your destiny. You have heard me sharing the story of that boy here. He went to the prison to pray for prisoners. And when we got there, I met this young boy there. What are you doing here? Said uh, he's been jailed. How old are you? Said I'm 22. How long are you going to stay here for? Because all these people who are around you, they are old, hardened criminals. What are you doing here? Say, how old are you going to stay here? Said, I've been jailed for 47 years. 47 years? Hey, you are 22 years old. That means you are not getting out of here until you are almost 70. The flower of your life will have been wasted here. I said, but I was puzzled. I said, but what's your offense? Say, man of God, I raped somebody. Hey, if you rape somebody, the maximum year for rape is 10 years. Why did they give you for the seven years? Said I raped an eighty-year-old woman. I said you, a boy of twenty-two, raping a woman of eighty. Somebody old to be your grandmother almost twice. And told that, but to let them, my mama, marry. Sir, a voice was telling me, do it. She, do it. She, do it. She, do it. She, and I did. She, so after I done it, I didn't hear that voice again. The voice that you obey. Determines your destiny. The voice. The voice. I pray for you here this morning. May you not hear the wrong voice. Every voice speaking evil to your hearing. I command them to be silenced, my father. Every misleading voice assigned to anyone here, let the voice be scattered in the name of Jesus. I shared with you before. This brother went to a party. At the party, found this very beautiful girl. The name was Funke. They talk, talk, talk in the party. They dance, dance, dance. He was meeting the lady for the first time. And right there, at the back of the party, he slept with her. No condom. Free sex. At the back of the party. And then at around 2 a.m., he took Funke home and promised Funke that he was coming back at 11 o'clock the next day. They brought this man to me. I'm not, I'm not, I don't tell people stories. I tell you what I see. I've gone past telling stories now. <laughs> so by 11 a.m. the next day, uh, this brother went to look for Funke. When he got there, he said, uh, Excuse me, I'm looking for Funke. The first woman I did say, What did you just say? So I'm looking for Funke. Funke. Ah. Say, wait here. Say, wait, oh, wait. Oh. The woman ran inside to go and bring all the other women in the house. They all now came down. Say, eh? young man, what did you say? Say, I'm looking for Funke. Funke. Say, describe her. And he described. Ah. They say, young man, go and look after yourself. Oh. Funke died five years ago. 
you brought Funke to this house last night? I said, yes, I did. Say, ah, she died five years ago. And that was where the problem of this boy started. I didn't tell his parents. Those parents ran to a psychiatric hospital. They took him to this deliverance. They took him to that. But he kept quiet. He was not talking until he got to my place. Then immediately they brought him. And he was looking like a mugu. <laughs> Worry people. They call some people mugu. Mugu means you look like a zombie. I said, what are you studying? Say engineering. Where? He mentioned the name of the university. I won't mention the university now. Who did you sleep with? Say, so ask mommy to go out. I said, Mama, out. And now confess to me what he did. It took him five years to regain himself and to go back to school. Destiny destruction because of just one organ in the body that you cannot control. I pray that as many people as are here today, and already this cage has caught you. You shall be set free. Amen. <laughs> man is very weak. <laughs> Every part assigned to waste my destiny. Die in the name of Jesus. A man drove to university. Powerful jeep. And he saw this girl. The young lady. Virgin. Says, show me where to go. The girl said, I, I, that's, that's the place, that's the place. So no, no. Enter this car. Come and show me. Come and show me. You get climb into the car. And that was the last thing she could remember. She was not herself again. Inside the car, this man with grey hair. May God destroy such men in the name of Jesus. This man with grey hair slapped the womb of the girl and brought out cowries. But three weeks ago, cowries. I said, You see? I removed this from a womb. I want the rest to be removed. I must sleep with you. Say, but daddy, I'm a virgin. Call it yourself virgin and you have cowries in your womb. It was at the back of that jeep. This old man, this virgin, this 18 year old girl. That's not where I'm going. Mm. The officer in charge of such things took the girl and brought her to me that Joe, this girl needs prayer. See what happened. My first question. Are you born again? She said, yes. Which church do you attend? She told me the name of the church is Pentecostal Church. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? No. Do you know why this happened to you? It's because you did not grow. You are just coming to church. You did not grow. That is the problem. That's why they can catch you like bush meat easily like that. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise! And make me fire. Cause you saw me in the name of Jesus. 